The next talk is from Jakob. Okay, here you are. <laughs> they, they are turning on. Is it ready? Can you hear me? Does it work? Okay, so um, I uh, started a research project about a year ago where I realized it was possible to um, freeze the memory of a computer in order to extract uh, the contents of it. Um, so we wrote a, a paper about this that we submitted to Usenix Security, and uh, just last week we found out it won the best paper, which is pretty cool. Um, Basically, there are a couple of different methods for doing these types of attacks, and um, all of them require physical access in most people's minds, though actually that's not the case. Uh, it's possible to execute a couple of them over the network. And so in order to show this, we released the source code for this, which I'm going to probably package for Debian, either in the next couple of days or next week or something. But um, the basic idea is that um, memory retains state even after power off, which means that if you quickly reboot a machine or if you cool a machine, and power the memory on later, you can extract the memory from it. And uh, to a lot of hardware engineers, this was sort of obvious. Um, to a lot of software people, this was pretty devastating because uh, a machine that um, has cryptographic keys, like, uh, I don't know, does anybody here encrypt their hard drive with uh, Debian's DMcrypt, maybe? Anybody? All right, so we broke DMcrypt um, on Debian, specifically. Um, and the way that we did that was by um, basically taking a, a, a ThinkPad. Anybody here using a ThinkPad in DMcrypt? All right, cool. So uh, what we did was we um, took the ThinkPad and uh, we turned it off, turned it back on, booted a small program. Uh, we have a couple of payloads. One of them is a Pixie boot payload. Uh, basically, we serve it out with a DHCP server and it spits out the memory of the computer over the network. Uh, we have another program, it's a key finder. It extracted the AES key. Uh, and then basically using that, we were able to uh, mount the file system of the computer. Um, so it's like um, not very difficult. Though we also have the, the ability to reconstruct keys. So the basic idea is that uh, there might be some decay in memory because bits, uh, bits will decay in a predictable way. And uh, our reconstruction algorithm uh, works like with up to 10 or 15 percent of bit error rates. And uh, we actually never saw anything more than I think point 0.1% bit decay. So our algorithms are pretty overkill for that. But um, it might be interesting to come up with a way, I talked with Theodore Eight of uh, OpenBSD about this, but it might be interesting to come up with some things that you can do to detect when someone might be cooling your system or to have a panic, uh, a panic button. And Theo and I came up with the idea of a patch to mAdvise. Basically, you could say, there's a whole bunch of software on this computer and uh, it would be really useful if in the event of some sort of security panic that you killed these bits first. And we don't care about having a kernel panic. We don't care about a piece of software crashing. Those bits have to die no matter what in the event of a panic. And you might just have a couple of milliseconds if you can detect an event. This might be like a case intrusion detection sensor. It could be a temperature sensor. Um, new DDR3 chips have um, specific temperature sensors on the memory, and you can set interrupts. You can say, if it, I guess, if it drops below a certain temperature, then that's a specific thing you want to catch, and then you want to do a specific action. So it would be kind of interesting to talk with some Debian people about making it possible for uh, creating this uh, sort of like catch and uh, erase situation. Because as it stands right now, it's pretty difficult to, uh, even if you were to to detect an event to actually ensure that you killed all of the bits properly. Like just uh, trying to remove DMcrypt should, in theory, get rid of the keys in memory because DMcrypt does the right thing. But if you can never hit that entry point and you can never actually destroy those keys, then you won't really be able to erase them and those keys will continue to be there. We have an iPod-based payload too. So if you have an iPod, we can put this memory dumper on it and it'll dump it into the iPod. And we also have um, uh, EFI, so if anyone here is running Mac OS X on Apple hardware or has uh, Debian running on Apple hardware, it could also probably dump the memory, but we haven't tried that for that. Um, anyway, if anyone has any questions, come talk to me about it afterwards. So. Thanks.